am Nick Boy and welcome to Pocket for Thursday, the 21st of January. Today on the show, console exclusives, paragons, and why too much dialogue is killing your neighbor's Drake. All right, here's what's been making headlines. Neil Druckmann, co-director of Uncharted 4 A Thief's End, has clarified what the game's branching dialogue options will be. Druckmann stressed to Eurogamer that Naughty Dog are not making Mass Effect and that instances of dialogue choice in A Thief's End would be few and far between. Druckmann said, Uncharted has a very specific story. It has a very specific ending that's very definitive to the franchise. What he's basically saying is no matter what dialogue option you choose, old man Drake's still gonna die. Next up, and the first images of the crowdfunded Shemu 3 have been released. The pictures depict a quaint little stream overlooked by a couple of familiar backs. The backs of Rio and Shenhua. The pic surfaced at the Magic Expo, which is currently underway in Monaco. Moving on, and Ubisoft has released another trailer for Far Cry Primal ahead of next month's release. It doesn't give up much more information about the game, but it definitely highlights some of the elements we expect to see in the series. It's one man against the world, and a whole bunch of scary wildlife. It's like living in Australia. I'm joined now by John, ladies and gentlemen, to discuss our last news story. Epic Games has released some hands-on gameplay footage of their upcoming third-person MOBA, Paragon. It's clearly closer to Smite than something like Dota or League of Legends. John, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? I'm not overly excited, to be honest. It's kind of like PvP and MMOs. Um, yeah, I've right. already been there and done that. Yeah. So there's it, it, nothing yeah. that really appeals to me in this game, unfortunately. In that footage, it, there is a lot of the PvP element of like uh, placing yourself, uh, the way you move around, trying to get behind people, and that's the cooldowns. Yeah, exactly. The only yeah, the only point of difference is, I guess, in PvP, you already have your gear. When you run in, you know yep. you've, you've farmed that for hours and hours. Yeah. Uh, this one it looks like you know the Dota thing. You go and you you purchase pots and you purchase yeah. items and all that sort of stuff. They, so. they, they're using like a card system, as is the current hotness at the moment. You mm. sort of get some sort of in-game currency thing that you can then go and, and purchase cards with. I, I I guess I'm kind of the same. I'm not crazy about the third person. I'm fine with. Uh, I just uh, you know twitch shooting, aiming, that sort of thing. You know is not really my strong suit. So, um, <laughs> so, so for me, that's the thing I'm kind of worried about. I'll obviously give it a shot, mm. uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see who they're aiming this game at because there's a, there's a lot of MOBAs at the moment. Are they trying to get people away from their current MOBA? We play Dota, half the world plays League. People mm. already play Heroes of the Storm. People Smite. play Smite. Yeah, it, Smite is the audience that they're going for. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's already established. Smite has the third person MOBA down already. Yeah. They, they've taken it. So. They're obviously a direct competitor there. It's kind of like they're just going, hey, you play Gears of War. Uh, ditch the sort of colourful gods. <laughs> come back to big hulking men in yeah. giant, giant sets of armour. Yeah, I just I just feel like at the moment we haven't seen the point of difference. No. So it doesn't look... Smite, like you said, Smite got to third person first. Uh, Heroes of the Storm has the map objective stuff, which makes it different, and they're much shorter games. Uh, and then League and Dota have their own, they're way more hardcore, way more involved. Mm. So, there's, for me at the moment, there's not something that jumps out and I go, oh, yeah, that's really different. But on a more positive note, the game looks fantastic. It does, it looks really good. It looks beautiful. And uh, I, I always liked the way that uh, Marcus Phoenix controlled in Gears of War. I feel like the movement there looks kind of similar chunky movements that you're sort of slamming into things like lots of the uh, the character that they were showing off there's lots of like just shoulder barging that sort of thing i feel like moving around that world will be really satisfying yeah and this is like the first sort of hands-on gameplay footage that we've actually seen like there's, there's only the one map there's only one guy really running around killing creeps you haven't really seen him attack anyone else yet so there's still a lot that we just don't know about the game that could be really amazing yeah so. and they do have some interesting other characters that they showed in some other trailer yeah, stuff where it's like it's not just guns it's like a guy with like weird Hands where he's clawing at things. Yeah, a guy with a big sword. Yeah. Gadget girl shooting her stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's gonna be variables. really interesting to see how all this MOBA stuff plays out. That's it for the news. It's now time for thing of the day. John, get to your computer so you can roll the titles. Ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba. Thing of the day. A group of Minecraft aficionados are working together to recreate GTA 5's map in Minecraft at a one-to-one -one scale. The work started on Nick's server on the 10th of January and they've already made great progress in Los Santos. They anticipate that the final work will be roughly seven and a half thousand bricks squared.
thing of the day. John, come back! Oh my god. <laughs> it's now talk through time. We suggest the topic and we talk through it. Today's topic comes in from multiple people, uh, but I have chosen the names Andrew Nixon and Watching You, Watching M. I don't know if that's supposed to be Watching Me or just M. Uh, and they want to talk about should there be console or PC exclusive games? And what do you think games being exclusive to one platform on release, like Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, how that impacts the studios that make them? John, you don't even own a console. No. <laughs> so you don't even care. No. I've got plenty of exclusive games on my PC. It's great. That is that is the console that you have chosen. That's correct. Yeah, you have chosen PC because of the enormous um, back catalog. And I would say also because there are games on there that you can't get anywhere else. Sure. Yeah, that's pretty much true. So do can't you... do iRacing anywhere else. No, you can't. And traditionally, console exclusive games existed because the hardware that was being made was completely different from each other. So mm. you went, okay, I'm going to make a game for Nintendo, not Sega. And so then that was why it was a Nintendo game and you couldn't play it anywhere else. Whereas now, all the consoles are pretty much just PCs. Mm. It is a way more flat structure. So why isn't everything out everywhere? It's a business, right? So take PlayStation and Xbox. They're mm -hmm. direct competitors. They want a better market share. So they need a point of difference between each console. So yeah. for example, Xbox have Halo. When you think of Xbox, you think of Halo. That's all you think of. Yeah. So if you can buy it on the PS4, then you've taken away the reason why people would buy an Xbox in the first place. Yeah, exactly. And like 343 who made that game, sure they would want that game to be out on as many places as possible because they want everyone to experience it. But that studio is owned by Microsoft, so it's kind of like they exist because Microsoft paid for them in the first place. And there are studios out there who do want their games to be played by everybody, but for other sort of business reasons, they can't. You look at Street Fighter, which is coming out. Yeah, Sony, yeah, Sony forked up a whole bunch of money. To yeah, Sony didn't just like buy the exclusiveness. They sort of paid for part of the game to be made. So it's, it's there on PC and PS4 because Sony coughed up the money. Yeah, and it's a way of getting Microsoft out of the equation as well. Exactly, yeah. And and it, like you said earlier, the consoles are so similar that at this point you really do need these points of difference because if it was just they all played everything, then you would just buy the cheapest console. It wouldn't matter because it doesn't matter to me that I like the Xbox interface more than I like the PS4 one. If the PS4 was $100 cheaper, I'd just buy that because I go, it plays everything and... Uh, and like, so that's who wins. So they do need these points of difference, which, you know, can be a shame for some gamers, but ultimately it's just a business reality. Mm. Like, I don't think we necessarily deserve to have all of them. It would no. be nice. I don't think anyone wants exclusivity. Yeah. But I think in the gaming industry, I think it's a necessary evil. You know, if, if everything was just available on everything, there would be a horrible monopoly. And ultimately, competition breeds creativity as well. Sure, sometimes you get Rare's last 15 years, but you also, because of exclusives, we've mm. got Naughty Dog, we get Uncharted, we get The Last of Us, and the reason we get these games is because Sony is breathing down the necks of these studios going, you need to make the best game ever. Here's all the money you could possibly need to make that happen, so. There are pros and cons. There is. That's it for today's episode of Pocket, my Pocketeers. Tomorrow on the show, I'm chatting to Ryan Haywood and Jeff Ramsey from Rooster Teeth. So if you have any burning questions for those guys, let us know in the comments. And while you're on the internet, check out Good Game on Facebook, YouTube, and iView. Want to meet fellow Pocketeers? Then join the Pocketeers Facebook group and Steam group. You can follow Good Game on Twitter at Good Game TV. Follow Pocket at Nickboy, at Pierreth, and at GG Edit Monkey. That's you. That's me. There are links to everything I just said in the description below. Today's thing of the day was sent in by Daniel Bryan. Thank you very much, Daniel Bryan. Have you made a thing? Send it in. Until tomorrow, Nick Boy out. Better monkey out.